me in today's video as we explore Rosafine, a one-of-a-kind Compierre Cotter 1650, built in the renowned Compierre Werf shipyard in the Netherlands in 1993. This yacht is a marvel of Dutch craftsmanship. Recently, the boat has been meticulously refitted, elevating its quality to excellent standards. With its twin John Deere diesel engines and steel construction, it's more than just a boat. It's a luxurious, livable explorer yacht you won't want to miss. And best of all, at the time of making this video, she is currently listed for sale with the Volk Yacht Brokers. Before we carry on with the yacht tour, this is just a quick reminder, if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and give this video a like. Rosafine has a length overall of 16.5 meters with a 4.9 meter beam and a 1.6 meter draft. If you're considering navigating inland waterways, her air draft is 3.45 meters. The yacht also offers ample headroom at 1.96 meters. One of the features that I love about this boat is her canoe shaped stern. A canoe shaped stern offers some great advantages especially for those with an eye on long distance cruising. First and foremost, its design enhances seaworthiness by better handling following seas, minimizing the risk of the stern being overtaken by a wave. The streamlined shape of the stern also contributes to reduced hydrodynamic drag and also minimizes the slapping or pounding that boats often experience in choppy conditions. Let's board the boats using the port railing side gate. Before we venture inside this intriguing vessel, I want to take you on a walk around the spacious deck. As we jump aboard and head towards the stern, we get a great inboard view of that double-ended canoe-shaped hull. The aesthetic appeal of a canoe-shaped stern cannot be overstated. This design harkens back to a golden age of nautical craftsmanship, offering classic lines that many find more captivating than modern alternatives. As we pass the ladder leading up to the flybridge, let me take you to the bow of this mini ship. Note how big the windows to the saloon are as we walk along the wide, non-slip side decks protected by the high bulwarks. The raised pilot house can be accessed from the deck via a starboard and port door, so bringing the boat alongside is much easier thanks to this ready access to the deck. I love the fact that this boat also has a Portuguese bridge. Not only does the skylight on the deck allow extra light into the owner's cabin, but once open allows lots of fresh air into the area too. As we head up to the neat and clutter-free bow, we find the boat's electric 24 volt windlass. Turning 180 degrees from the bow, we get a great view of the sleek lines of Rosafine. Note also how the boat has a clear view screen. For those unfamiliar with this device, it's a rotating glass disc driven by a motor to spin at high speed. When the disc spins, it throws off water, ice or snow by centrifugal force, helping to make sure that the helmsman has a clear view even during adverse weather conditions. Clear view screens are particularly useful in maintaining visibility in challenging conditions like heavy rain, high seas or icy conditions. Before we head inside, I want to take you up onto the flybridge. I really do love visiting this huge indoor marina at the Volks Lustret office. And I know from my previous videos that many of my viewers love the look of this place. As you can tell from the background, there are lots of different boats of all shapes and sizes in this marina. It really is a boat lover's dream. The flybridge on Rosafine has an electric crane that is on the port side of the boat. On the radar mast we find the boat's GPS antenna and Raytheon solid state radar. These solid state radars have quite a few benefits for a boat like this, including the fact that their scan rate cannot be altered if you encounter some howling winds. I've seen it before on boats with traditional spinning radars where adverse weather has slowed down or even stopped the motors which turn the radar antenna. Of course, at the helm station on the flybridge, we have all of the essential controls and just check out that view. Personally, I see this flybridge as a blank canvas that can be configured pretty much how you want it to be configured, depending on where and how you are operating the boat. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. 
Now let's head back to the main deck and head inside, where I'll introduce you to a feature that truly sets this boat apart. It's on board jacuzzi, a luxurious amenity especially remarkable for a vessel of this dimension. What better way to finish your day at sea than a nice hot soak in your own private jacuzzi? As we step into the saloon, you immediately notice the C-shaped seating area on the port side, thoughtfully designed for both comfort and functionality. On the starboard side, you'll find ample cabinetry that provides extensive storage and also plays host to a TV, perfectly situated for viewing from various angles in the saloon. The seating area in the saloon offer an inviting space to relax or dine while enjoying panoramic views courtesy of the generously sized windows surrounding the saloon. Looking out, the ever-changing seascape becomes an integral part of your onboard living experience. As we move forward, we ascend some steps into the galley and another dining area. One of the things that I like about this split-level layout is that it does not matter where in the boat you are, you are still going to get great views thanks to these fantastic windows. The well laid out and functional galley is great for the livable lifestyle. In the galley there is a brand new dishwasher as well as a brand new isotherm fridge. The neolith countertops are also brand new and there's a large stainless steel sink. Remember if you're looking to stock up on any nautical items for your boat then I do have an Amazon store which has got loads of stuff that are essential on board items. If you want to check the stores out, then click on the relevant links in the video description. And if you do happen to buy anything, then I get a small commission, so it really helps to support the channel. I'm interested to hear what you think of this living area, so share your thoughts in the comments below. Moving on to the helm station, we have a Logic Combi electric compass, depth sounder, log and windset. Communication is streamlined with the Shipmate RS8300 VHF. On the starboard side we have the throttle control levers for the twin John Deere engines. The VDO autopilot is complemented for seamless navigation by a rudder angle indicator. And now let's head down into the accommodation area. This boat has a total of 7 berths in 3 spacious cabins. Let's start with the owner's cabin located forward. As we pan aft, you can see there's lots of space down here, so when you're underway and you're down here with your friends or family, you're not going to be stepping on each other's toes. As well as a spacious French bed, the owner's cabin has a skylight that can be opened for additional ventilation. For cruising, this boat has a 2000 litre stainless steel freshwater tank, as well as a 500 litre blackwater tank, both with level indicators. Now, for a lot of people, when they go cruising on their boat, they have to make do without having a bath, instead opting for a shower. But not only does this boat come with a bath in the master cabin, but it also has a jacuzzi. What a great way to relax and unwind after having spent a full day at sea. It's worth pointing out at this point just how spacious and how airy and bright it feels in this ensuite bathroom. It's something you don't often get when you're in an ensuite on a boat of similar size. Now we've finished having a look around the master cabin and the ensuite, let's head aft and I'll show you the first of two guest cabins. Over here we have a very comfortable twin single cabin. As you can see there's plenty of space between the top bunk and the lower bunk in here so when you're sleeping you're not going to feel like you're in a confined space. Also, this area benefits from plenty of wardrobe space, which is ideal for those long voyages with family and friends. Both of the guest cabins share this bathroom and toilet, and I do like how they've managed to fit a his and her sink configuration in here. There's also natural light thanks to this porthole. Now that we've finished having a look around the shared bathroom, let me take you into the second guest cabin. Personally, I think this setup is great if, for example, you've got some guests you want to bring along with you who also have a couple of young children. The primary guest cabin does benefit from a double bed and this desk area so you can catch up with emails or general day-to-day -day work things as you're motoring towards your next destination. Again, there's plenty of space in here so your guests can bring along all of their essential items that they're going to need 
as you journey out on your itinerary together. If I was a guest on this boat, then this work area would be a perfect place for me to set up my laptop and edit my next video. As we head out of the guest cabin, let's go back up onto the upper deck because I want to show you the engine room. Over here, we do have a day head on the starboard side. As always, I'm interested to hear what you think. So let me know in the comments below what you think of the accommodation on this boat. As we head up and back towards the engine room, I also want to show you a great feature regarding the layout of this boat. Should you ever need quick and easy access to the boat's circuitry, everything has been conveniently placed in these two cabinets, which are directly behind the helm station. Those of you with a keen eye can probably spot the remote control for the bow thruster. In the second cabinet is where we find access to all of the main fuses on board the boat. Now that we've finished having a look around the accommodation areas and the saloon as well as the helm station and of course the upper deck, it's time to head down to the engine room. Now would be a great opportunity if you haven't already to please give this video a like and also if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got loads of fantastic boats coming up which I can't wait to share with you so make sure you stay up to date by hitting the bell notification so each time I upload a video you won't miss it. When I was on board filming I was talking to the current owner of Josephine who was telling me that they have used this boat as a liverboard so if you're looking for a steel liverboard explorer that is ready to go this boat is worthy of your consideration. Stepping into the engine room with a little bit of help with my GoPro camera, we'll find a mechanical sanctuary that speaks to the boat's overall quality and performance. Two John Deere 6068 engines, each boasting 180 horsepower or approximately 132.48 kilowatts, power this vessel. These diesel engines were originally installed in 1993, but underwent an extensive service in April 2023 and they've each been run for a little over 1,100 hours. Cooling is managed via a hopper cooling system and power is transferred through shaft drives that feature, of course, effective shaft seals. The engines are governed by electrical controls and a hydraulic gearbox, delivering a smooth and responsive experience. The bow thruster, also hydraulic, was overhauled in 2023 to ensure optimal maneuverability. The exhaust system is a dry type leading to a fixed propeller with four blades made of stainless steel. Oil bath lubrication keeps the shafts functioning smoothly. When it comes to electricals we have a 12, 24 and 220 electrical installation backed by Northern Lights generators. One has 50 running hours, the other 214. The batteries were recently updated in 2023 and monitoring is simplified by a master volt battery monitor. There's also a 24100 battery charger, an inverter and diode battery combiners to ensure a seamless flow of power. And for added safety, a Japsco electric bilge pump and bilge alarm are on standby. But what do you think of the engine room? Let me know in the comments below. So what about Rosephine's range? Well, when motoring along at a cruising speed of 10 knots, and thanks to her two 2,000 litre fuel tanks, then depending of course on load and conditions, Rosephine has a range of around 3,000 nautical miles. Her top speed is around 12 knots. At the time of uploading this video, she is listed for sale with the Vork Yacht Brokers for 545,000 euros VAT paid. And for that price, you get a twin engine steel explorer yacht that is not only in fantastic condition, but is also ready to head off beyond the nautical horizon. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the owner of this stunning boat for allowing me to come on board and shoot this footage. I'd also like to say a big thank you to Devork Yacht Brokers for helping to arrange this visit. If you'd like to find out more about this fascinating boat, then make sure you click on the link in the video description. And remember, if you've got access to a boat that you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, I'll leave my contact details again in the video description. 
Until next time, fair winds and following seas. Next week I'm going to be heading back to Diamond's Mascant shipyard to film on board Scintilla Marie, a former Dutch beam trawler that has been rebuilt into a luxury expedition yacht. Make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell so you do not miss the video. And remember to come and find me on Instagram for some behind the scenes updates whilst I'm filming at the shipyard. You'll find a link for my Instagram account in the video description. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to give the video a like because it means that more people on YouTube will get to see the video. And don't forget also to check out my other videos and playlists. I've put some of my top recommendations in front of you now. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.